Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Banana farmers are urged to play their part in ensuring the success of government efforts at securing new markets for the industry. ECLAC supports the development of the national gender policy for St. Lucia. The NCPC talks productivity at the AG's chambers. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. The government of St. Lucia has received a nod of approval from an integral social partner for its efforts in securing new markets for the banana sector. The National Workers' Union, the NWU, in an issued statement this week, applauded the government delegation that traveled recently to the United Kingdom in search of new markets for St. Lucia bananas. The trip culminated in some major wins for the banana sector. However, farmers are being encouraged to play their part in ensuring the success. Operations Manager of the National Fair Trade Organization, Stephen Best, says that consistency is key. And even while the Agriculture Ministry and by extension the government of St. Lucia employs strategies to effectively bolster economic activity within the banana industry, farmers themselves must ensure that they are consistent with their supply and quality of bananas for export. And this is something that it's all well and good for the government to do its part and first to advocate quality and high standards. But the farmers must act in accord with the message that is uh, sent out there. Because in the market, first, people look at the aesthetics of the fruit. It is not a matter of saying that our fruit is sweeter, it's of a, maybe a superior quality, all this may be so. But in this continuum, Testing is the last thing. First, the consumer uh, look at the, the commodity, and if it is appealing to the eye, they are going to gravitate towards it. Granted, once they have tested, and, and in accord with the program of the government, the, the determination to brand and so on, and make this a unique product, yes. So our farmers now have to respond accordingly. Mr. Best further explains that once farmers respond in kind to the efforts being made by agriculture leaders in attaining and sustaining new markets, the entire country stand to reap the benefits under this plan. They have to follow through in producing quality bananas. Now, if they're producing quality bananas, it strengthens the hands of everyone, the government, the um, officers that are out there um, promoting production and productivity. Uh, by they doing their part. And it is to their benefit also because uh, they are able to consistently market the commodity once it is of the standard that the, mar that the, that the market requires. Coordinator of the Banana Productivity Improvement Project, Kurt Severin, says that his program's activities will continue to strategically address areas and concerns which could adversely impact productivity within the subsector. There are a number of initiatives which we are, we, we, are, we are now undertaking to ensure not only increasing production but also increasing productivity. And we have seen changes in, in productivity in some of the key banana growing areas. So yes, we, for the consistency of supply, for example, we look at irrigation this year. Okay? Um, our agronomic practices, the best practices which the farmers have to employ in order to get, to maximize whatever resource they're going to employ, that we are working closely with the farming community to get. So I'm confident that the target which we have set will be achieved maybe a little sooner than we anticipated. This year, the Banana Productivity Improvement Project has also earmarked about 300 acres of land to come into new banana production. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Fay Clark reporting. The Government of St. Lucia has received technical assistance from the United Nations Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean ECLAC to support the development of the National Gender Policy Statement and Strategy and the Management of Gender Data in St. Lucia. 
The Montevideo Strategy for Implementation of the Regional Gender Agenda within the Sustainable Development Framework by 2030 and the 25th Review of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action request that governments adopt and implement policies, laws and strategies to promote gender equality and the rights of all women and girls, as well as to select, compile, integrate, process, analyze and disseminate gender data and statistics to identify progress made and challenges that remain in addressing gender inequalities. With the help of the United Nations Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean ECLAC, the Department of Gender Relations recently held two workshops to help in these processes. Acting Director of Gender Relations Janie Joseph explained the importance of data analytics in policy formation. It's easy for us to just have a perception and sometimes those perceptions are not necessarily grounded in the reality especially if those perceptions are very popular in other parts of the world right so we need to be able to to generate our own our own data to be able now to speak to the reality in addition to that we can monitor the progress of St. Lucia when you sign on to to, to, to various um, treaties we sign on to CEDAW where we um, implementing the Beijing Platform for Action, we're implementing the Montevideo strategy. We want to be able to speak to the progress of St. Lucia in the implementation of these instruments. And the only way that we can do so is to monitor certain indicators and to um, provide the, the, the relevant data. According to ECLAC's Associate Social Affairs Officer, Lydia Rosa Jenny, the technical assistance activities will improve the resource capacity of the Department of Gender Relations and specifically contribute to assist the government of St. Lucia in mainstreaming gender in national planning, policies and data, and by doing so help the country to meet its commitments to the regional gender agenda and related frameworks. So we receive uh, this list uh, of uh, requests from the government of St. Lucia and we did an, uh, an exercise of prioritization and so we decided to start with um, uh, assessing the situation on gender data management so the production, dissemination, and the management of gender data in the country, as well as how we can support the government with the development of the national, national gender equality policy statement and strategy, which is the first step for the national gender equality policy. St. Lucia will present for the first time its voluntary national review on the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development at the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development in July 2019 under the theme of empowering people and ensuring inclusiveness and equality. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, the NCPC, at the invitation of the Attorney General's Chambers, recently delivered a presentation on productivity as part of their monthly enhancement activities for management staff. Glenn Simon has the details. Building awareness of the issues related to productivity and competitiveness is the core mandate of the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC. So said the director of the NCPC, Fiona Hinkson, during a presentation on productivity at the Attorney General's Chambers earlier this week. When we got the request to visit the Attorney General's Chambers as part of the public service, we, we jumped on the opportunity because we, feel, we felt that every agency needs to be able to speak um, to issues of productivity. And the AG's Chambers is very important in terms of the role in pushing the regulatory framework for um, economic growth and economic development in St. Lucia. The mission of the Attorney General's Chambers is to deliver quality legal services in a timely manner to the government of St. Lucia with integrity and professionalism while focusing on facilitating an enabling environment, creating value and effective advice through the Registry of Companies and Intellectual Property, the Legislative Drafting Unit and the Advice and Litigation Department. Acting Registrar for the Registry of Companies and Intellectual Property, Clozel Chris, said the department plans to pay greater attention to measuring its productivity. Ordinarily, persons normally tend to say that the government agencies are not producing at the level that they ought to be producing at. So as a Attorney General's Chambers, it's important for us to know what the gaps might be in terms of the way we do things, how much we are producing, how much more can we produce and how more effectively we can assist the public in, in our whole operation. 
The AG's chambers through the Legislative Drafting Unit prepares the legislation to enhance the business environment and ease of doing business climate in St. Lucia. Director for the Legislative Drafting Unit, Gillian Vidal-Jules, said despite the many external constraints which impact the delivery of outputs, measuring the unit's productivity is extremely important. Um, before the presentation was done, uh, there were some questions in my mind that I had in terms of presenting um, status of work reports to show the level of productivity of the Legislative Drafting Unit. So it was very helpful. The director of the NCPC stated, that her unit is actively seeking to develop a tool to measure productivity in the public service, which accounts for over 12% of St. Lucia's labor force. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Brian O'Brien is up next. The problem starts with finding a suitable spot. It extends to double parking. Offloading zones are ignored, thus inconveniencing commercial activity. Handicapped spots are occupied by drivers who use the quick errand excuse. And of course, there's the constant fear of parking tickets. In an effort to curb these and other parking-related issues, the Castries City Council will be implementing short-term paid parking. $3 an hour can save you $500 in parking tickets. Short-term paid parking, coming soon. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Nisha. Welcome once again to your updates from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. One match was played Tuesday as the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports Secondary School Under-15 40 Overs Cricket Tournament continued at the PI Playing Field. Sufre Comprehensive Secondary enjoyed a well-earned 69-run victory over V4 Comprehensive Secondary. Sufre Comprehensive batting first made 212 all-outs in 28.4 overs with Wounded Island's Under-15 player Kevin Gassi top scoring with a well-played innings of 94, and Zidane Regis making 25. Bowling for VFL Comprehensive, David Natrum back 4 for 43, and Hensi Mason 2 for 46. In reply, VFL Comprehensive could only manage 143 all-outs in 32.4 overs, with David Natrum making 43 and Hansi Mason 15. Bowling for Sufre Comprehensive, John Modest, back 4 for 32, and Rahim Hippolyte, 3 for 26. News on the Youth Empowerment Project, as it looks to wrap up its first major program, that of the Logo Competition, which helps strengthen its base for further programming under the project. The judging panel is expected to meet Thursday to determine who the actual winners of the competition will be. The project has also embarked on some procurement notices for the different programs being undertaken by the project. This is in an effort to get the core team in place for the various programs targeted. Baseline studies will also be carried out in the various communities under consideration for the program to collect data on the areas being offered. Officials say these field officers will receive training as early as next month to ensure they extract what are the priorities of persons who are the intended targets of the programs. And in that item on the continued work of the Youth Empowerment Project, we have concluded our segment on youth development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The National Conservation Authority, the NCA, with collaborative effort from the Office of the Prime Minister, the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, and the National Apprenticeship Program will be conducting training exercises targeting 
120 individuals on the proper method of handling sargassum seaweed for manufacturing as well as for disposal. These trainees are residents of four communities adversely impacted by the influx of the sargassum, namely Denry, Prale, Miku and Vefo. The training exercise aims to prepare these individuals to participate in the implementation phase designed to last for nine months in the first instance. The NCA continues to work closely with Algas Organics, a local entity involved in converting sargassum into value-added products by providing the company with over 160,000 pounds of sargassum. This sargassum project will not only create employment for residents in the targeted communities, but also ensure that these communities do not continue to be affected by the large influx of the seaweed. And stay with the NTN nightly. Up next, Parmas Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquarium. If you have to do your own spray mix for Black Sigotoga treatment, always follow the recommended safety procedures. Always wear protective gear when handling or being exposed to the fungicide or other pesticides. Use only the fungicides recommended by the Black Sigotoka Management Unit when the treatment is due. The required quantity of the particular fungicide recommended must be mixed with spray oil and applied at a rate of 1.5 to 2 gallons per acre. Fungicides which are not recommended or applied at the wrong time or even when the spray treatment is not done effectively, can cause the fungus to become resistant to the chemical and therefore may no longer control the disease. Oil fungicide mix which has been stored for too long should not be used to treat black cigatoga disease. If carried out, such treatments may not be effective and can lead to poor control of the disease. Remember, before each chemical treatment for black cigatoga disease on your farm, First, the oil fungicide mix must be reagitated immediately before application. For more information on how to treat and control Black Sigatoka on your farm or in your backyard garden, contact the Black Sigatoka Management Unit at 451-5491, 451-5894, or email bpmu at candw.lc. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund, of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquaire. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame, Department of the West Coast Habilité pour Information, and Gouvernement Sedlici, GIS, a CBP Television National, PIA NTN, Capozato Nouvelle Aquaire. Presato, Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement the Republic Shin Taiwan, Katavai AP Government Setlisi, the Pilane Demil Set, a bio program, the development powers, only one pay, to improve the Ville Pep Setlisi. A bio program, the government can construct, can occupy, and rehabilitate diverse facilities and to the court, a pay setlisi. A bio set of Vaila, the cafet, a bio project, the façon to control the good law, but the super canal, Façon pour apêcher tes enfants, enfin, pour stabiliser quoi, tes chemins pour ces communes et aussi l'école, tout un effort pour porter bon bénéfice pour peuple cette ici. Récemment, le gouvernement de la de République de Chine Taïwan a apporté finance à bas programme ça là. Aussi pour deuxième phase là en l'année 2008 et première phase pour l'année 2019. Ambassade Douglas Chen a annoncé que depuis le programme de la commencé, il a déjà financé plus de 2400 projets qui ont financé déjà avec plus de 25 000 travaux qui ont été occasionnés. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour le développement économique, Honorable Guy Joseph, dit que le programme a déjà placé un lot de valeur pour le peuple. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour la justice sociale, et le gouvernement local, on ne va pas bien admettre tout, par l'ambassade chaîne assurance là qui se pose ça là, qui a touché tout comme une assiette ici. Selon on ne va pas admettre tout, l'ambassade chaîne n'a pas seulement eu des gouvernements pour ça là, à ce comme une assiette ici, mais aussi, mon nez ça a moins forcé la capacité de payer. Dans ce cas là, le programme là, placer attention plus à ce projet qui a développé le pays. 
Cette situation observée à Saint-Mépi, le reste de la terre, à niveau international pour préservation des plants et des animaux. Ça a fait le 26 à mois de mai. Ces Nations Unies qui proclament le mois de mai pour aider à augmenter les meilleurs comprendre ce sujet qui est pour faire et puis plein et animaux en la terre. Et le thème de ça, c'est à se manger et à se nous. Nous avons une responsabilité pour l'éducation et pour entretenir le développement de l'Europe Dr. Gail Rigobot, qui est aussi très intéressé de protection de l'environnement, noté grande importance pour préserver plein et animaux et l'autre vive la terre, qui est très important en la vie du Et aussi, car pour tuer des millions de la terre, et puis, oui, med et manger. Dr. Ribergut fait peuple à changer qui, sans ex existence, vont vos miel, papillons et l'autre petit animal, en pile manger la terre, qui est disparu, à moins qu'il y ait quatre ans. Le ministre Ribergut aussi a conseillé les citoyens et les pour aider et prendre l'avantage de l'occasion et engager dans la discussion pour faire un pays à plus au courant et puis grande significance pour préserver les plans et les animaux. Fondation pour le développement culturel de cette ci ça qui connaît aussi comme CDF, de tient une activité de sélection pour représenter cette ci à un grand fête de théâtre et culture, ça c'est Carrie Festa. Carrie Festa, c'est un grand spectacle qui a duré pour 10 jours, côté ces pays caribes là, quand il a une exhibition, diverses présentations de théâtre, culture, de ces, en parmi plusieurs autres performances. C'est une activité culturelle, ça là. Qu'a célébré l'esprit, culture et héritage du peuple caribéen en musique, magie, affaires folkloriques, littérature, théâtre et danse. Directeur pour étudiement en CDF, Céleste Button, déclare que Carifesta a apporté les artistes caribéens pour collaborer et que ça a apporté bon bénéfice et aussi aider à avancer la culture régionale. Sur le bouton, Carifesta a présenté cette ci l'occasion pour montrer des grands talents qui nous nient et qu'en même du temps, qui apprennent hors les autres pays. 25 artistes qui ont trouvé l'occasion pour représenter cette ci et qui ont trouvé étonnement, ils ont aussi reçu un certificat. Le directeur de production, Adrien Frederick, dit qu'il a poursuivi étonnement en théâtre, dans ses châteaux, à leur atelier. Et après ça, ça, après ça ça a trouvé, ça qui a trouvé sélecté, qui a participé à la grande fête de Carré Festa, qui gouverne le train d'Arec Tobago, qui a organisé le 16 pour le 25 avril 2019. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie pour vous garder et je vous donne une invitation pour vous puis moi considérer que vous avez la vie de vous présenter une autre nouvelle à Créole. Après ça, je vous remercie de vous présenter Nisha. Merci, Opel Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. We're experiencing partly cloudy skies, occasionally becoming cloudy with widely scattered showers. Moisture and instability in the week of a tropical wave will cause some showery spells over the Les Antilles during the forecast period. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. Tides for Castries Harbour, they were high at 12.31 p.m. and low at 6.10 p.m. Tides for Vieux-Fort Bay, high at 1.38 p.m. and low at 7.37 p.m. The seas slide to moderate with waves 3 to 6 feet or 0.9 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.34 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles. <laughs>